Hi everyone. Uh, in the last video what we did was we talked about high pressure wind patterns and low pressure wind patterns <clears throat> with the cold and dry air, the warm and humid air. Now since then uh, what we did was we constructed some isotherms which are connecting points of equal temperature and today what I want to do is show you how drawing isobars which connect points of equal air pressure can help you identify where a high pressure air mass is and a low pressure air mass is on a weather map. So let me just bring a map over here. <clears throat> okay, when you look at a weather map, just like isotherms which connected points of equal temperature, isobars connect points of equal air pressure. And these air pressures right here, 1016, 1024, are in millibars. Now when you look at, let me see where it went, <clears throat> when you look at the reference table, this is the conversion between millibars and inches. Here are the millibars over here. Remember uh, one atmosphere is sea level, okay? So that's where we get the air pressures from. When you go to a, a weather map, what you do is <clears throat> you connect points of equal air pressure. It's normally uh, by fours. So this is 1016, 1020, 1024. And if the numbers, if the air pressures are increasing towards the center of an air mass, see how these are converging on this H? then that means that's a high pressure center. And from the previous lesson, you know that high pressure centers go away and clockwise. Okay, they look like this. High pressure goes away from the center because pressure blows from high to low and it gets deflected to the right. So these are the high pressure wind patterns these are the low pressure wind patterns towards the middle okay and counterclockwise so now when we go back to the map <clears throat> if you were given a weather map and you had to connect points of equal air pressure called isobars you would connect the lines the same way that we did the isotherms numbers would be uh, increasing towards a given point so that would be a high pressure center, for instance, right here. Then what they could do is they could ask you, what's the wind pattern? Well, wind blows from high to low, so it's going to blow away, and it blows clockwise. So it would look like this. Something else that they may ask you is, what is the weather like in the center of that high pressure air mass? And then you could refer to your profile where if there was a person standing here and it was a high pressure center, wind would be blowing away from the high. So the air above them would be sinking. As air sinks, it compresses, it adiabatically heats, and you end up getting clear skies. So this is clear. Okay, so when you have a high pressure system, there's no clouds in the sky. Down here, these isobars, which connect points of equal air pressure, are decreasing towards the middle. It goes 1,004, 1,000. The smaller numbers are in the middle. So this is a low pressure center. So we have a low. If, if they asked you to draw the wind pattern around a low, it would be counterclockwise towards the middle. Once again, you draw four arrows, one in each quadrant. And then if you wanted to know what the weather was like there, the profile of a low pressure wind pattern, okay, the wind blows towards the low. When it gets there, the only place it can go is up. As air rises, it expands because pressure is less up here. The molecules spread out. It adiabatically cools, reaches the dew point, and you get clouds. So this would be a rainy and cloudy air mass. This one would be clear. 
Okay. So let's clear that out. All right, the next thing that I wanted to show you was, let's say you had a weather map, and all of these are station models. Now, normally, on the weather map, the station models will be encoded. For instance, this air pressure up here, 1000, 1004, when it's on the station model, you should have dropped the 10 and moved the decimal. So initially, this would read 0, 4, 0. Okay. In order to read it correctly off of the station model, you would have to put a 10 and then move the decimal over so it would become 1004. The reason, the reason why I, I use this worksheet um, for, for this purpose is because on here I would have to, you know, with this marker, try to write 10 and move the decimal in each one of those and that would be impossible. So th this worksheet already has them converted. So now what we could do is we could look at them and uh, read them as their true value. So they want you to draw ISO bars for 996, 1000, 1004, 1008, 1012, and 1016. Now, like I said, air pressures in millibars normally go by multiples of four. So <clears throat> if I grab my pen, what I'll do is I'll look over here, uh, 996, there's one, there's one, okay. Now, what you do is you look at the general pattern. It appears that the smaller numbers are in the middle here, and they're increasing as you go out. So right away, I'm assuming that this is most likely a low pressure center right here. Smaller numbers go on the inside, larger numbers go on the outside. So the first line that they want me to draw is 996. So I'll put the 995 on the inside. That's a smaller number. 999 on the outside. There's another 996. Smaller numbers on the inside. 995. 1002 on the outside. And 998 on the outside. That would be my first isobar. Isobars are a type of iso line that connect points of equal pressure. The next line would be 1,000 they want us to draw. So I look around, here's 1,000, there's 1,000, uh, there's another one. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I'll go up this way. 998, smaller number on the inside, 1002 on the outside. In between the 996 and 1001, up to 1000. Come down this way, outside of the 999, there's another 1000. And then 1000 doesn't go in between 1002 and 1002, it goes in between here and then up and around. So this is our low pressure center. The next one that I could draw is 1004. It travels around the outside here. Larger on the outside. 1004 goes in between 1006 and 1002. There's another 1004 up this way. Is 1004 and around. Okay, so this is the center of a low pressure air mass. If I was going to draw the uh, the wind pattern around a low, I automatically know that it's blowing towards the middle and counterclockwise. Now, if you forget this, you can look at the station models. The station models, if you remember, uh, wind is always labeled based on the direction it's coming from. So the wind, the shaft right here on the station model is pointing into the wind. So the wind is blowing this way. So they're coming around like this. If you notice, the wind is blowing counterclockwise and towards the middle. And these are pointing into the wind where it's coming from. 
So I draw four of those, one in each quadrant. And that would be the wind pattern around a low. Also, lows are referred to as cyclones. This is a cyclone. And hurricanes and tornadoes are cyclones. Okay, then we'll go over to this side. Take <clears throat> another color. Let's see what we got. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, now with these numbers, you can see 1017, 1018, the higher numbers are in the middle and they're decreasing as you move out from the center. So the first one that I'm going to draw is 1016. 1016, because this is a high pressure center, the larger numbers go towards the middle. So it goes 1016, 1016. 1014 is smaller, that goes on the outside. 1017 is larger, that goes on the inside. Come around this way. 1018 is larger than 1016. And connect it. The next one would be 1012. 1012 will come up this way. 1014 is larger, so that will be on the inside. There's another 1012. And then, whoops, 1013 is larger, so that goes on the inside. And come around like that. Okay, we have a high pressure center. And then wind blows away from the high and clockwise. So it's going to come out and go like this. Four arrows, one in each quadrant. And that gives us our, our wind pattern around the high. Also, this is referred to as an anti-cyclone. Okay, so we have an anti-cyclone, we have a cyclone. This is the type of air mass that is a hurricane or a tornado. And the way that we identified the air masses on the map was by using isobars, which connect points of equal pressure, very similar to isotherms, which connect points of equal temperature, and the same procedure that we used on contour maps for contour lines. Okay, now let's go down here. Let's see what they asked. Describe the direction of wind movement around the center of a high. We did that away and clockwise. Describe the movement around the low, counterclockwise towards the middle. Describe the direction that winds appear to blow between the centers of high and low pressure. Okay, uh, the centers of high and low pressures, what they're talking about there is um, those profiles that we did where if this is a high pressure center this is a little tough um, and the wind is blowing away from a high if you remember the profile you cut this in half look at it from the side the wind sinks above the high so that would be clear skies and then over here with the low if we did the profile wind blows towards a low and when it gets to the center which is like the eye of the storm or the eye of the hurricane the air rises as it rises air pressure decreases because you're going up in elevation the molecules slow down they adiabatically cool reach the dew point and you get a cloud okay All right, and uh, I think that's about it. Okay, talk to you soon.